Inspire Instructor podcast where the learning never stops. Welcome you wonderful people to the Inspire Instructor Training Podcast. So we've got a great episode today um, with a trainer local to me. Um, so we're, we're, we're going all Devon today. Um, so we have um, Kevin Selwood on the episode, who's a great trainer. Um, Kevin also has his own podcast, um, Excel Podcast, which is E X E l podcast um and kevin's doing similar stuff to us so if you, if you enjoy this episode then head over and, and listen to kev's podcast um on the episode we discuss reference points and also we are talking about um were opportunities um used to clarify learning outcomes um and so that's our competency for today but before we get started um i'd like to um basically ask you guys if you if you enjoy the show and you're finding it beneficial and you think others would find it beneficial then i'd, I'd love it if you could go and share that on facebook and and effectively let the world know um because i feel like the more people that listen the the the, the more people i can and support and help um and that's that's why i do this is i i genuinely want to support as many as instructors as possible and help sort of kind of raise those standards within the industry so um yeah please please go and share um that the part that you enjoy listening to the podcast and maybe we can get some more listeners on board um so also i'd like to um talk to you about um our cpd opportunities that we have available so if if you're not already a member then come and join our mentorship at inspire um we offer um zoom sessions we offer online courses is. but probably most importantly is we have a community and we offer regular support from from myself and diana um and everyone um we're getting great feedback from that and everyone's enjoying it and really getting gaining from it and so yeah again we're sort of kind of there to support instructors and we just want everyone to be the best instructor they can be um, on that note as well I'd like to just remind you as well that we also have workshops coming up um, so head over to the website um, www.inspireinstructortraining.com um, and check out our, our workshops um, all about dealing with the human side of um, training so dealing with the human next to you not prioritizing the the topic um, and basically what we want to do is is how can you get into your pupils minds and thoughts and feelings and and dealing with that aspect of training um and we're very much sort of kind of coming away from the idea of talking about the competencies now i appreciate that i've got a podcast talking about the competencies um but we want to basically give you the the key takeaways that you can go and put into your lessons to improve your lessons so that when it comes around to a standards check or a part three you're not having to worry about the competencies because you're just going to go and deliver an excellent lesson um, and that's what our workshop's all about so on to the show so welcome to today's podcast um from training wheels and excel podcast um kevin selward welcome kevin Thank you very much, Phil. Uh, nice to see you at last after um, various shenanigans yesterday. Yep. But we, we don't need to. We don't need to go into that. Just good to see that you're nice and dry now. <laughs> yeah, no more flooding. We're we're, <laughs> we're good to go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, welcome, Kev. Um, you have your own podcast, so I'm sure you're yes. used to used to this, and and um, I'm sure we can tell people about that later on and yeah. point them in point them in that direction because I I know I'm an avid listener. Um, oh, good brownie points for you <laughs> um so but my first question is and i explained this to you before that i was going to throw you under the bus and not say what it's about um so my first question is uh reference points good or bad oh dear well i've t to a certain extent yes but not to the extent to having little white stickers plastered all the way up and down the sides of my car or on the front windscreen. Yeah, making it look like a little piano. Yeah. Uh, I, I think 
for example, let's take an example. When somebody uh, first pulls up at the side of the road, however good or bad they've done it, I'll then ask them, how well have you done? And probably at least nine times out of 10, they'll say to me, oh, I don't think it's very good. OK, what evidence have you got for that? And they'll look everywhere apart from the relevant door mirror. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. And then they it takes some time. And usually I have to point out that we do have the little wide angle blind spot mirrors on there as well. And then the eyes, what? oh, yeah, it's not bad, is it? Or, oh, we're miles away, even though we're really nicely parked because mm -hmm. they've got no concept of this at all. OK, so was that a fluke or did you have some mechanism by which you worked it out? I almost always it's a fluke. OK, what can we do to try and work out how close you can get? And we by hook or by crook, and sometimes it's like getting blood out of a stone, but sometimes the learner, and there's one girl I've got at the moment who, why she's paying me money, I am not sure, but I'm quite happy to take it because she just gets everything. And she came out with, oh, well, the, the curbs, but halfway across the bottom of the windscreen. And I'm looking at her in wonder and amazement. And I'm thinking, yeah, OK, we've got a reference for you to use. Now, you go and tell mum and dad, or ask mum and dad next time you're with them, how did you work out? how close to get to the curb. And I said, you know, probably look at you as if you've just come from Planet Zog and are you really my child? <laughs> because eventually we just do it. You know, there's some process of osmosis, we work it out. So if somebody needs that sort of help to begin with, yeah, great, let's use it. If we're reversing into a parking space, how do we work out? It's, it's where to look more than let's have a reference or let's turn when the sticker is here or it's there or whatever. Um, so, yeah, let, let's have some sort of evidence base for how we do it. But, you know, there's nothing rigid about it. You know, no, I, can, I think... can you be fluid and flexible in how you do something? And if you're slow enough, can you work out where you are and can you change your steering if you need to? So I, I, I am not one for these rigid reference points at all. It's good. Um, yeah, fair enough. I'll, and and I, I figured <laughs> we'd be on the same wavelength um, <laughs> as we are with so many things. Um, yeah. So the uh, I'm, I'm 100% with you. I, 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 I actually probably would go f further than you, actually, in the fact that I just despise <laughs> them, um, a full stop. And, <laughs> yeah. and I don't like them in any, any reference, no. really. Um, I... I get, I even sort of even to the point with the one with the wing windscreen, I do kind of get it because I think if I was working out how do I judge where I am when I'm parking <clears throat> next to the curb, I am sure that that is part of it, but it's not part of it that I'm staring at. And I think that's the important thing is I'm yeah. not, yeah. I'm not looking down at it. It's just, yeah. it's part of a view that I have. It's like in my peripheral vision, I suppose um for me actually when i when i talk about pulling up at the side of the road i actually talk to my pupils about looking down the road and driving as if they're going to just be next to the curb forever because if yeah. you think about yeah. your pupils they when you're pulling up at the side of the road maybe not for the first time but in, in future lessons they've been placing the car exactly where they want to place the car all the time so this is no different it's just a new place to yes. to place yeah. the car mm -hmm. And I think that's that's the issue that 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 can come across here is that you you suddenly start looking for different things on a skill you already have. Yes, like you're already yes. capable of placing the car where you want to place the car. Um, so I, I tend to get them look down the road. I get them maybe to imagine that there's like tram lines and you're just you're lining up with the lines. Um, look at the car, like aim at the car in front. Like they always look. Yeah. Funny, like when I say that, because then they think I'm they <laughs> drive into the car. I'm like, stop, stop before you get there. But aim at it. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's um, use our, our brakes rather than them as a brake. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I think things like that, rather than and even because the wind yeah. and the mirrors, I'm not like I, I like what you, your your bit where you were talking about the mirrors was like once you've stopped, 
you, you check where you are and that's fine. I do that as a driver. Yes, I'm like, oh, yes, how how yeah. did I do? But but not on the way forward. No, because, because if, if we're look, if they're staring at the left door mirror, you know damn well they're going to steer onto the curb. Yep. Yeah, it's when you stop them and go have a look forward, and they're like, "Oh, <laughs> face, I'm facing the lamppost." Um, yeah. Um, so it's things like that, though. I think yeah. that are really important to, yeah. to to be wary of. You you mentioned maneuvers, um, and I think that's also one that that this comes up massively pointing out reference points and 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 things like that it, it, it should be a a feeling because what if the car park's different like yeah what if the car's yeah. different what if the pupil's different there's just so many variables i'm, I'm just going to touch on what we're coming on to later on because i yeah, think this is uh, because if we're in a car park especially a, a relatively busy one uh, and somebody is driving in forwards or reversing in a, 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 a general dog's body, you know, Joe Public, and, and doesn't quite get it right. You say, watch what they're doing now. You know, um, and this this idea that some of them have that they've got to do it first time. I said, no, watch what's going on there. That's real life. That person hasn't quite judged it correctly. So what are they doing now to get in? Or can I do that on my test? <laughs> yes, you can. Um, so this idea that you've oh, I've got to do it at this point, I've got to turn one and a half turns and I've got to keep it. Oh, no, no, let's, let's just see. Just go with it and see what happens. As long as you've got control and the car's slow enough, give yourself time to work it out. Yeah, I think Parallel Park has that issue where you were talking about you know, one and a half turns and stuff. Oh. Um, and 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 like I don't, in a way, I don't blame instructors for having this because actually no. I used to like but like when I first started out, that's how I was taught. That's what I used to do, and and to a certain extent, it works. It, yeah, because you can get someone to be able to do this clinical parallel park with no car behind you, it, no pressure, it, like this fake scenario. Yeah. But but teaching them to reverse and like understand steering and and be okay like again I like you you must do this when you take your part two um, sessions out like the when we go to do a parallel park I just say like, go and do a parallel park show me what you got um and yeah. always their steering is it, it's never sort of kind of it's, it's not this rigid one and a half turns one and a half turns back it's 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 fluid it's it's yes, like adjusting yeah. and that's how people do it in real life and so yeah. so train let's train our pupils to 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 do that too and and to to be okay with adjusting the steering wheel and wiggle it this way a bit and wiggle it that way a little bit and, and oh, finish yeah. where you want to yeah. finish yeah yeah I'll, I'll just let them as, as long as they've got control of speed there's only one guy i can remember where i duelled him when he started because i think lewis hamilton would have struggled to go as back as fast as this guy did yeah uh, but but everybody else they've got the control and whether we're getting in or not is totally irrelevant to me. I, I have three questions, and they're only permitted to say yes or no. So are we in between the white lines? And um, it's either yes or no. If it's no, okay, let's come back to that. And we'll work see if we can work out why. Are we re reasonably straight? And it's amazing that, you know, as far as most learners are concerned, they've got to be gun barrel straight. And if they're a millimeter out. <laughs> That's unreasonable. Yeah, yeah I, I will never be able to back drive. <laughs> uh, and then are we back far enough? Uh, and that's the one that they struggle with. So I said, well, get out of the car. Where's yeah. the front? Where's the back? Okay. Is that all right? If yeah. it's not, what are you going to do about it? That's, yeah. a really, that's a really good example of actually, one, not using a reference point because and, and getting them to, to, but also, again, going back to what we're going to talk about later with learning outcomes, um, the that that the learning so you've got an opportunity there to to clarify a learning outcome um in in the fact that you're in a place where they can go and have a look and, and explore yeah. what they're seeing rather than well if you line up with the bottom of the wing the back window the the line or what i don't know what what it is i'm making it up <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but it, it, like if you you see what i mean it's like that there's no learning outcome there they're doing as they're no. told they're becoming a little yes. robot yes yeah. whereas yeah. i always do that get them to get out and look i tell you what i do before i get them to get out and look is i get them to get show me with their arms like how far they think it is um and they'll go like this and then realistically yeah. it's I, I say like go like this i forget it's a podcast um they'll do like a foot <laughs> and then realistically it's like two meters 
Um, yeah, so you see what I mean? It's like, it's and, and I think this links, and I didn't actually mean it to link. Um, <laughs> that was pure coincidental, but actually that is probably, now we've kind of got to the crux of it. The, my issue with reference points is it doesn't clarify learning outcomes. Yeah, yeah. It, you, 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 it doesn't dig into the, yeah, that detail. What's your thoughts? So we've talked about um, like parking and like pulling up on the side of the road where they're, where they're generally used, but I, I had a conversation not too long ago with an instructor who wanted to use a reference point for like a break. It was almost like um, you see, it's a Formula One sort of kind of like a breaking point. Like you need to be in second gear. Like so, approaching the roundabout, you need to be in second gear by this stone or signpost. Um, and, and they used it to try and get the yeah, just to try and get the people slow enough to be able to approach the roundabout and and my guess is it worked but i, I wasn't a fan uh, what does it work and does it work on that roundabout every single time um you know, is it always going to be possible to approach it in second gear mm -hmm. are there sometimes when even before you've got there you realize actually there's a two or three cars in front of me that are stopped um you know is that gear going to work? And, uh, and I go back to all the part three debriefs I listened to, apart from the one last week, where right. our, our, our dear beloved John, <laughs> if, if Vicky, who unfortunately was successful, ha had remembered that I have told all my PDIs that if he ever does a part three a debrief and does not mention in the written comments MSM or system of learning or hazard routine, then I'll give you a hundred pounds. The bugger hasn't put that in the one that she did last week. <laughs> but, you know, but, but the other part of it that he always comes up with time and time again now is are they drive or are you trying to get them to drive the way you would? Mm -hmm. And I think, would you be approaching that roundabout every single time in second gear? And, and I can get the uh, the reason for doing it. We want to get the speed down. Mm -hmm. but, you know, is that flexible enough for them to be able to deal with every eventuality? Yeah. You know, I, 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 I question that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, the only thing I can, I can think of on that chair, I, I recorded an episode with, um fiona taylor um earlier this yeah. morning um, which is actually going out after this but w we did discuss a little bit about how sometimes you'll get a pupil to approach around about slower than they should normally um like you exaggerate it because because you want them to be able to assess what that yeah. feels like also to make things easier so maybe it could be used in that sort of scenario where it's actually being unrealistically slow yeah. um but for can, me can again, yeah, and I'll just come in there because we had exactly that on Vicky's part three last week. Oh, okay. She took a learner who wasn't her first choice um, because the, the girl who was her first choice the week before told Vicky that she suddenly remembered she's on holiday in Spain <laughs> the week of part three. <laughs> How the hell you forget that is beyond me. But um, anyway, so it, she took this girl who really wasn't an ideal candidate and actually had a complete meltdown halfway round. Oops. Um, so Vicky actually took over for five minutes just to get a calm. And John said, I wouldn't normally recommend doing that, but he said in the circumstances, it was the right thing to do. And what, what Vicky had got the learner to do, or the learner was in first gear coming up to around about probably 100 metres at least away from it. And then Vicky was doing exactly the same thing when she demonstrated it. Um, uh, and John really did castigate her for, for that. Because you know, is that the way you drive? So I think there is this dilemma here that a, a part three candidate hears that from a senior examiner, but might want, well, I suppose when you're away from that scenario, you can actually do, do it, not right, get away with it, but you can do it if it, if it helps. But you know, there there is this dilemma. Of... No, I, yeah, it's a bit, I would argue with John on that, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is always fun. Um, <laughs> the but it may, and 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 again, it's one of those like it, this is where I think sometimes the examiners have to be careful what they say. Yes, because, yes, because what they mean is in that moment on that day, and yeah. and 
what my scenario is where we're coming in slower is not necessarily to say this is correct. It's to experience it so we can learn from it so that we can see what you would then go. Okay. So what yeah. does faster feel like? And then where yes. do we find a bit in the middle? So it's just experimental learning. Really. We're putting the pupil in scenarios that they can then assess and then decide whether and, and assess for themselves what feels right so that you then don't have to constantly tell them slow down or speed up because they've they've been through both scenarios themselves and experienced it and therefore have come to their own own conclusion so i think if you're doing it for that purpose it, it's probably okay yes yeah, um, yeah. or for a short uh, amount of time i think yeah, it's okay yeah yeah it, I, I, I always say to them that it, it's okay for this but have in the back of your mind and also get your learner to be thinking post test not just about the test how are you going to drive when you're on your own and you've got your full license are you going to drive like this no you're not but we're not going to you're not going to get there in 5 minutes time to the standard that will work when you're at post test so you know how how are you going to get there what what well, we're now getting into the realms of um the mantra before we actually move off on a part three what help do you want from me and all this sort of stuff <laughs> but i i think it is just you know, how are you going to drive in the future how are you going to get there and yeah we're not going to get there today but let's have that target in mind yeah no i definitely i mean all, all conversations within the car should be about how the how the pupil is gonna drive after the test really yeah. the yeah. test is just a little speed bump on the road yeah yeah, the yeah. yeah absolutely yeah. um but yeah i think probably i would say nearly all of my lessons are post-test based apart from probably the last few where we maybe do a few test specific things which is just prepping them for that environment of yeah. Yeah. being under pressure i suppose oh, i always remember um doing an nlp session with chris and ian brett and they came down at the devon hotel no not the exeter motel the one up a bit further up and uh, i remember chris talking about your that you're going along pass the test center pass uh, and using the word pass all the time and if you get anywhere near the place they're just trying to get that word in their mind yeah no absolutely um i can't remember who, who it was i was speaking to that said they watched a presentation and they drew a graph of like from learning to test and, and they picked up the person going that's not the end <laughs> that's not the end of the graph <laughs> your graph should end over here um, yeah. and it should be a blip in the middle and it's a really good point like we we should not be thinking that the test is the end of the end of end of our journey um yeah. um even even to maybe a train from a training point of view it should be like we should be encouraging pupils to continue their training whether mm. that is whether that's through um obviously coming back and doing extra training or whether that's just through self-reflection yeah. um and and training them to be good at self-reflecting um within the car because I, I i've sort of talked about this before that experience is obviously a good thing and, and everyone sort of kind of says well you start learning when you pass your test and that's when you become a um <laughs> which i hate i hate that phrase because because i always think what the hell are you pay me for um but okay. it is one of those things where you only start learning at that point and you only get good with the experience if you self-reflect because look at look at the drivers yes. out there there are lots <laughs> of drivers out there that are poor and that they have lots of experience but they have experience of getting it wrong and not dying yes yeah and therefore yeah. learning this is okay um and so it's yeah if we if we create a, a generation of pupils that can self-reflect then and that's going to improve road safety yeah. yeah yeah oh yeah i'm always going on well not always going on but um, always wanting them to do their reflective log at the end of each lesson I, I, it's not homework i'm not going to mark it but you know go away the next two or three hours if you can or at least within 24 hours just write down what you think away from me i don't want you to write down what you think i want you to write down just put so and, and use usually it's a, very much the same things but usually in in it there's something i can really latch on to and say wow yeah thank you for that because you know i can use that with you in the future but mm -hmm. if 
if you're not if you're not reflecting on things then you're not learning in my in my book I'd, I'd say the same for instructors yeah. that, that we should yeah. be oh, yeah. yes. you know, reflecting on our, yeah. on our lessons and, and our performance. And, and I do this for the podcast and <laughs> you just like, if you're not reflecting, yeah, you're not, you're not moving yeah. forward. It's yeah. interesting what you said there about uh, when you said that there's something like there's a nugget you can sort of kind of catch um, from, from their reflective log and you're like, Oh, thank you for that sort of thing. And I think that's really important when we do reflective logs is because it, it I, like I don't know if you you're the same as me, but my, a lot of pupils can be quite reluctant because yeah. it feels like homework. Um, and but I think that there are ways to encourage it, and that is one of those ways is to thank them for doing it and yeah. saying thanks. That's really good. This is going to really benefit you. We're like well done, sort of kind of thing. But adding that sort of kind of praise because, and and that's going to help them sort of kind of yeah. continue to do it. Another thing I do, and I know you said you want to do it away from the car because, and and I agree. I I think it, reflective logs out of the car are better than reflective logs in the car. But maybe those first few need to be in the car to get them used to filling them out and 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 get into the process. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, maybe I'll to do that. I'll try that. <laughs> <laughs> Just with your awkward ones that don't like doing it. Um, well, yeah, 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 that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just like it builds the habit, I suppose. Yes. And they just go, yeah. Okay, so we, normally we fill this in the car. How about you have a go and fill it out? Like literally go in the house and do it now. Like, oh, don't give yeah. them the time to, yeah. to yeah. Sort of kind of forget. And then yeah, gradually. That, an hour later, you send them a text. Oi, where is it? That, and that's and that's a good thing. You can follow up, follow up with that yeah. as well. Um, but again, it goes then back to like, well done. That's great um, yeah. to, to reinforce it. Okay, yeah. um, I think we've um, slammed ref- <laughs> slammed. Yes, uh, I, 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 I think I think I've climbed out from under the bus quite well there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I figured you'd have the same same um, opinion on reference points. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's but again, it's interesting that it, that like I think as a novice, I probably use them quite a lot. Um, maybe yeah. cause I didn't feel I had the skill. Well, but first of all, just because that's how we were taught to do it back then. Um, Yes, there is that side of it. I, I can remember um, being taught to do um, bay parking um, at 90 degrees to the bay. Yeah. Uh, and then... Um, still, there's still loads of instructors out there that oh, not well, only yeah. do it, but, but think they should. And also yeah. well, then, this was the, trainers. This was my point. This yeah. was the way I was trained to do it. And then um, just after I'd started doing... Um, training people i went um angie preslin down in plymouth wanted to sit in because she was looking to do audit and we had a guy down there and we did this bay park and afterwards she said to me kev why do you do it like that and i looked at her and said what do you mean well why do you do it at 90 degrees and i came out with this that exact phrase well that's the way i was told to do it and and, and she mentioned the fact that at plymouth test center you could, you've actually the bays are on both sides, yeah, yeah, and they are in line with each other. And she said there are some instructors who will get their learner to drive forwards into the bays on one side of the car park and reverse back across the car park into the bays on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, or naively, I'm saying, can you do that? He said, well, as long as you do it safely. And, and then I had a discussion about all of this with dear old Ray Billington, who oh, was yeah. the test centre manager in Exeter at the time. And I said to Ray, Ray is it OK to do the Bay Park uh, starting at an angle or whatever? Uh, and I won't repeat exactly what he said to me, because this could be a family show. <laughs> but, but he said, but, God's sake, Kev, you know, as long as they get the car in the bay and it's safe, I don't care how they do it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And I think it's at, at Newton Abbott, to Center, we, you, you, you can't really do a 90 degree one. One of the bays, I think. Oh, you no. Know. You'd take a wall out there, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's the sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's lots of walls been taken out of that. that <laughs> um, yeah, and it's just, again, it's what we're taught, though. And I think it was like, it also kind of goes back to the whole role play. A, it, like when the test was a role play so the examiner yes, yes the examiner could drive so if you gave them a reference point yeah. they would suddenly go oh that's a really good tool i'll, I'll fix my magical driving <laughs> yes. you could yeah. already do it um 
and I think that's where the sort of kind of reference points sort of came from. Yeah, yes. Is that yeah. sort of kind of element. Yeah. Uh, rather than a understanding of it. I um yeah, I remember I remember going at the expo this year, went to I drove the reverse the lorry. Oh um, right, yeah. The expo, they had like a little reverse in the lorry. Um and it was quite funny because the, the, the guy said when the red line meets this bit, start turning. And first of all, it meant nothing to me because I couldn't see a red line. Oh. <laughs> um, and the, it's not it very good out, if you're color, not if you're color blind, don't <laughs> Yeah, I know. Yeah, but well, it turns out the red line wasn't in view yet. So oh. in, in about two seconds, the red line came into view, and I was like, "Oh, that red line. Okay, turn." Um, but there was still the confusion there. But it, it also kind of meant I didn't really learn anything. I I gen yeah, I, I love yeah. that experience. But what partly because it was great fun reversing yeah. the lorry. But also I loved just being being the learner for a second and yeah I, and actually feeling like I was being over instructed. Um, and this is no oh, no yeah. offense to this person. Yeah. He, he had a hundred people to get through, and he just wanted yeah. to get on with yeah. it. And that was fine. It wasn't a yeah. standard check, but um, <laughs> I felt I felt over instructed, and I felt like I wanted to tell him to shut up and let me have a go. Yeah. Um, and I can imagine learners have this <laughs> very, yes. very yeah. same feeling all the time. Yeah. And the, but also the felt, I felt that in that reference point, I didn't feel like I'd learned anything. Yeah. I felt I'd learned to turn when I was told to. Yes. Yeah. And I'm sure that red line isn't on every single lorry. So if I came up to another lorry, I wouldn't know when to turn. <laughs> and so I needed more of a, an idea yeah. of why am I turning for what reason how much and all that sort of kind of stuff and 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 i think yeah. that is just a really good example of why i don't like reference points because yeah. and it brings us on very nicely because i didn't have a learning up i didn't have a learning outcome then I, i'd done yeah. what i was told and, yes. and yeah and if i go back and do it again which i'm going to because that was good fun uh <laughs> at the next expo <laughs> i i don't think i could replicate it because i can't remember which way to turn yeah, yeah. but but if i'd if I'd have learned what I was thinking and f what I should have been thinking and why I was turning, I'm sure I would have been able to take it in because yeah. I'm quite intuitive for reversing even mm. lorries. Um, so, so, but anyway, that brings us on to where opportunity, <laughs> uh, our competency for today. So where opportunities and examples used to clarify learning outcomes. Um, let's start with you, Kev, on this one. So what, what does this competency mean to you? Well, do we want to just put it into perspective first of all about what the ADI one says? If you, if you feel it? like reading the ADI one out, you, <laughs> you, can feel that you can read the ADI one out. <laughs> well, let's let's just, while training in technique is core to the learning process, it is important to reinforce this input and to link it with theory. The best way to do this is to use real world situations during the lesson. The use of practical examples and scenarios on a lesson gives the pupil a better understanding of when, how and why to use a particular technique. Going back to this, what we've been talking about, really. This could be done, for example, by asking the pupil to think about why mirrors are important when changing direction. Well, that's just one example. But I, but my feeling about this particular criteria in the part three or standards check is what a fantastic opportunity you have in every single lesson to be showing your skill or your ability to get some learning from your student. Because if you're not, if you don't find an opportunity or an example in every single lesson, then there's something wrong with you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because you go to any lesson and you have no idea what's going to be presented to you but there's going to be so much, so many opportunities to actually do something with this, whether it's your learner doing something, whether it's right or wrong, there are learning opportunities available. And we can go into that in a bit more detail. Whether it's somebody else doing something right or wrong, there are things going to be going on out there that you know, you've just got to, it, to me, this is a gold plated, gift wrapped opportunity uh, it, it's just sent from whichever heaven you might believe in or which you know whatever <laughs> your, your your benefactor is um yeah thank you very much because there's going to be so much out there so, so that's my my view on this i'm sort of saying thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk about this one because 
you know, all, that, all, all of them probably going to come in. But yeah, what, just go out of, no, don't, don't ignore what's out there that's heaven sent to you. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you you sort of kind of nailed on the head then in the fact that this is the crux of what we do. It's like <laughs> we're, we're paid to to create and have learning opportunities. <laughs> like they, they're, they're coming to learn. So we need to take opportunities to have learning opportunities, like to, to have those learning opportunities. It's the crux of what we do. So it's what we get paid for. Like it's yeah. like making sure that whatever happens in the car on the day, that we use those moments yeah. to to add learning. And and actually something I, I quite often talk about to my instructors is we're we're learning not doing. Um, and I and I get we learn we're, we're learning a practical skill, but sometimes people go for a drive or go do some roundabouts, and and I'm like, no, we're not doing roundabouts. We're learning yes, about roundabouts, yeah. and and so it's not so much what happened. It's it's what what conversations and what learning took place around what happened, and and I think that's what happens here is is making sure that when something and like you said earlier good or bad happens that did we take the opportunity to add a learning outcome into yes. that yeah. um and and so that that's crucial within within that um the using real world situations so i think that's a, one of the classic ones it's probably not the one I, so i think that's the one where people get for this and, I, and there's there's a bit later yes. that i think yeah. we'll talk about that that people don't necessarily get where they can get points or, or or, or use this but using real world situations and so that that is kind of like your hazards on the road yes, <laughs> like the, yeah. you, your situations go oh oh there's a thing we can learn from that um and and i think that's that's crucial I, I remember sitting in a lesson um like late last year and we were driving along a uh dual carriageway and an ambulance came the other way and the instructor said, oh, there's an ambulance there. Shame it's not behind us. Otherwise, we could use it as a learning opportunity. Because <laughs> um, I was sat in the back. So he was just kind of like, oh, learning opportunities. And I was like, uh, why can't we? <laughs> why can't we use it as a learning opportunity? Just because it's not on us now. Yeah. And so we then spent the next five to ten minutes talking about how we would deal with an emergency vehicle behind us while we we're on this dual carriageway. Yes. We were doing yeah. a dual carriageway lesson, yeah. so it's part of the lesson. Um, and so that had just prompted a conversation yes. that they then used to create loads of like, where, what would you do if the ambulance was behind mm -hmm. you now? Like that sort of kind of scenarios. That, um, um, that's the key to it is going that deep with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll give you a scenario that I had. Stop that <laughs> within the last couple few days. God knows what day it was. Um, now you and I will know the Countess. We're around about in Exeter, but you know anybody from elsewhere won't. But everybody, I'm sure, has a roundabout that's relatively busy, where there are two lanes of you turning right. There are two lanes available as you start turning right, and both those lanes squeeze into one as you leave the roundabout. So it's that sort of scenario. And I had a learner who went round there and negotiated the roundabout absolutely perfectly. And so it's not an easy place to pull over and talk about straight away. So we went into the housing estate down the road and I said, um, you know, how, how do you feel about that roundabout? Did you, did you use your mirrors? And put a you know, put a signal on if, if whichever lane we were in. Um, yeah, I did all of that. And so, so what did you, you know? What, what's the purpose of looking in the mirror? Because it's it's not a roundabout where you can actually have a lot of those questions straight away when it's so busy. So, you know, so what, what was the point of looking in the mirror? I'll just see if there's anything on my on my left. Okay, fine. And I think that's the level at which a lot of people leave it. Mm -hmm. So then it's okay. uh, and the, he was in the middle lane, so it's the right of the two that were leaving the roundabout. The left lane was completely empty. Um, so we had a sort of, and then I had, it's the what if, you know. I, I have Claire Wilmot to thank for that. Many years ago, I went up to Oldham and did a day with her, and she introduced me to the world of what if. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like you say with the blue lights. You know, what if there had been something there? What would you have done? Yep. how would you have dealt with it and so it's you know, 
that when the next time something like that happens and there is something there have you got a way of dealing with it is it in your mind that yeah this is what i would do or not do so that then we can have a conversation about whether whether what they're saying is right or or, or not but it's getting that depth of, in there that's where the learning takes place yeah absolutely and that was the bit i was sort of referring to when i think people get that this is this competency is about using real life situations in front of you but the bit i think people don't realize where they where they maybe lose marks on this is that they yes. don't go into yeah. detail they don't find out that they, they don't they, so i use this at being cowley's school of motoring um i always say to my instructors that they need to milk everything for every, milk the situation for everything you've got <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> but it works um, have, have we got another one as well yeah. <laughs> um so you know we won't go into dairy pumps um, <laughs> um so but th that that's my point my point is is like let's get everything out of this yes. this yeah. learning opportunity Absolutely. and so you've said about like the what ifs and have you got a plan for it if 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 that situation plays out have you got a way of working out whether that car's a problem or not so like we talk about yes. what if there was a car there but realistically lots of times we look in our mirrors and there is a car there but we're not worried because we know that that car's holding back for us or is or are the car like do you how are you going to work out that that car's overtaking you or how are you going to work out that that car's holding back for you um in in that scenario yes, coming yes. off the roundabout and i think th that again is that next question that, that that deeper deeper question um how is that going to be different at night time that would it, it, yeah. and you're now just looking at a set of headlights um and i think it, these sort of kind of questions are, are digging that that it, and you can just keep taking that learning further and further oh, yeah. And, yeah and then for I, I would probably then even actually take it one one step further is go back so if, if their answer i've done this and there's a video on my tiktok of me doing this um where i took i i it, to be fair the pupil actually brought the conversation up which i which i love but uh, so we were, we were exiting around about the pupil had checked the left i think i'd prompted maybe to check the left mirror or something along those lines on the exit and we were coming off the roundabout and she goes why do I need to check that mirror? Um, and sort of just ask that question, and and so then we just like was like, wow, learning opportunity, yeah, great. Yeah, and so yeah. let's go. And that's and I think that's actually that's a really good point. Before I carry on the story, is that was my response. My response was like, yes, like you were saying about this is a gift sort of kind of thing. Um, what a great way to like, and I don't care what we're learning about right now. That is now our focus. Yes, yeah. Um, because I want to learn everything we can about that and make sure that she doesn't need to ask that question again. Um, and whereas I think maybe, and maybe a less experienced instructor would just palm that off with an answer and off we go. Yeah, um, yeah. Whereas we went, pulled over, had a chat, got my little toy cars out, um, had conversations about what could be there had conversations more importantly about what you would do if there was somebody there yeah and we got to the point where she'd worked out that you just go back round again and i went great let's go do it um so we went round we went and did the thing and i said i told her i was going to pretend there was a i think we were talking about motorbikes with the hazard she was worried about and so i was like ah scary bike um and then she would she would go oh yeah there's a bike there and then turn all the way around the corner again and so we went and physically practiced going around again it, it was obviously a fake bike but i guarantee yeah. that that pupil will never forget that learning yeah. opportunity whereas had i had i just maybe answered her question rather than spend and it probably the whole process probably only took about 15 minutes um yeah. and and that is now going to stick with her because she's experienced it um and, and obviously not the real thing but that's really hard to like i don't i can't remember there's imagine there's many bikers that would be willing to put themselves next to a learner <laughs> <about> to <laughs> exit around about um but it, it, it's as close as you can get to the yes. real experience yeah. and i think that's something to be be wary of again it's that taking it to that next yeah. level again like how can i keep adding learning like do we go yeah. are, are there scenarios where you can go maybe go put yourself in the position of the other driver in this in whatever maybe you had oh, a meet yeah. traffic scenario yeah. um and you want to go put them back in the other other driver scenario that's like adding learning opportunities to to, to this scenario um well, the num number of times i will do particularly if we're i've got somebody who's looking to go at a junction and uh and they're, and they're they're 
about to go and I'll stop them because you know sometimes you just don't have time to ask the questions you just got to instruct and so or duel them and uh, so, so tell me why of oh, what reason you, you had for thinking you could go oh well I thought I could get out before them well I said yeah I'm sure you could get out before them but what's going to happen once you're out there <laughs> and what's that drive you know Put yourself in the place of that driver and somebody has pulled out in front of you and you know it's so you're, you're this put yourself in their place um i've used quite a lot yeah absolutely and but i think again maybe you can go around and be that driver and again your scenario is tricky because you need someone to pull out in front of you <laughs> um but but actually, but what those, if? Yeah, what if something's going? <laughs> definitely, the what ifs are good. But actually, they're they're the sort of things that I tend to remember. And yeah. the next time someone pulls out in front of them, it it clicks in my mind. I'm yes. like, oh, remember yeah. that time yeah. that you did that? How do you feel now? And so the learning outcome in that one might come later on. Obviously, on a part three and standard set, that's quite tricky. But um, <laughs> just going to be really lucky to get that 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 situation. <laughs> but I think over a course of lessons, definitely are moments where. I refer back to something that's happened previously on, on, on past yes. lessons Yes. Um, to sort of kind of clarify that. Um, if Fiona Taylor again, this morning talking to her, she, cause I use these, her toy, her, her diagrams with the little toy cars. Yeah. Um, and she said something as simple as if you're happy, you've got this meeting traffic scenario and you're, you've obviously got the pupil looking at it from their perspective and then you just turn the turn the diagram around and now they're looking yeah. at it from the other person's yeah. perspective. Um, and I've, I, I, I'm sure I've done that, but I've never really thought about it because I, I definitely do what you've suggested where you go and do it from the other person's like, driving wise, but do just turn it to the diagram. Yeah can be yeah. really really like so that that may be something for people to consider like even mm, it doesn't have to yeah. be her diagrams it's like you could have drawn a picture but maybe just sometimes turn it round and go okay what's it look like from this point of view yes. this is what the yeah. other driver's looking at um and and it's amazing what you what they'll see differently in, yeah. in that scenario and this again is that going back to that um milk in the situation for mm. everything everything you can get out of it like what learning can i get out of this moment basically and and i don't know if you're like this on lessons like it, you're just looking for those moments those little oh god things. yeah yes yeah. well, every, well it. we were on a lesson this afternoon and i could hear some sirens from somewhere and, and, and part of me is thinking please come along behind us <laughs> <laughs> Please come behind us. I mean, because we you know, uh, we had that last last week some sometime when there was a the, there was an ambulance coming towards us. It, it was a long oh well Topsham Road, you'd know that. So there's not a lot of space to 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 move over. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing because not one single driver mounted the curb. I was so so impressed with them. <laughs> Gold stars for everyone in it. Yeah. And, and everybody was just very gently moving across. And, and, and I said to uh, my learner, said, so what do you think about that? And how uh, everybody's behaved there? And she said, well, they, they all went over really slowly, didn't they? And I said, yeah. So do you, do you think anybody, do you think it would have made it any easier if people had gone up on the on the curb? And she sort of looked at me and I said, you don't know, no, you're not sure what to answer, are you? Let me give you a scenario. What if there'd been a a, a mother with a, a pushchair on that curb, on that pavement? Do you think it'd been a good idea? And that, you know, sort of helped to reinforce that actually, these people actually did the right thing for once. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it, 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 the emergency vehicle one's a really good one. Like yeah. seeing pedestrians can be really good. Just like, like signposts can spark a conversation. Uh, it, it's like, it, like use what's yeah. in front of you. Like, yeah. um, if, if, if it's particularly weird, definitely don't let it go. If, oh yeah. Yes. If it, 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 that, that's got, you've got to jump on those moments of, of something random happening in front of yeah. you. But if it's something like a signpost or something like that, where you're going to get those regularly, absolutely you can use those as learning mm -hmm. opportunities but maybe you'd be then also considering do i need to because what we is it working towards our current goal 
Um, yeah. Whereas there are certain things that happen on the road where I'm not sure I care that it it's working towards your goal. Don't miss the opportunity to talk about that. The ambulance is a really good example. It's very unlikely that dealing with emergency vehicles is part of your goal on that lesson. Yeah. So when one turns up, you just happen to go, I've got to use this moment yeah. to, to, to add some learning. It could be that emergency vehicles, you drive them down Herbertry Road and you, you sort of just hope that one turns up, like like with the police station and the and the yeah. and there, you're going to get one. Um, so yeah, but I think I think the, the blue lights also are a, a a difficult one to deal with in terms of just managing the risk by asking questions. Because if if they've never come across it before, you're probably going to be sort of instructing them what to do and and then talking about it afterwards. Yeah, no, I if, agree. They, if they experience it again, then can you remember what we're going to do about this? Yeah. Yeah, you can absolutely do that as you go for, as, as they're becoming more competent. You can you can let them. But I suppose it's one of those ones where I, I'm not a big fan of experimental learning because I don't <laughs> want to get it wrong in front of an ambulance. No, quite. It's not, it's not worth the learning opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, you're right. I think we, we probably lean a bit more towards um yeah. talking through but I, I think i'm sure everyone else had, like it's, it's a bit hard around newton where we are but um i'm sure like particularly if you're in a city there, there has to be certain roads where you get more emergency vehicles yeah um because yeah. of where the hospital or the police station yeah. is yeah. and so i'm sure if you just spend a few lessons like putting yourself and it's yes. like you can do other stuff while you while you're doing it and you're just like waiting for but yeah. but while you're doing it you're talking about what would you do now what would you do now mm -hmm. Um, you're talking about awareness, like you're still yes. teaching skills. Um, and like, how early can we spot the ambulance? How early can we hear it? Um, how early can we think about where we need to where yeah. we need to be? Like, if one turned up now, what would you do? Like, if yeah. one, I know, there's a bus lane next to you, definitely have that conversation. Those sort of kind of things. So, you can absolutely sort of kind of have a lesson around oh, yeah. Yeah. emergency vehicles mm -hmm. in, in in that sense. And and maybe that's what like, and, and I say maybe that's, maybe people are doing this. It's just something I I haven't done. I think it's more difficult where 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 we are because there isn't that sort of particular one route yeah. where where we get lots of emergency vehicles. Um, but maybe that is a thing that you should be doing. It's just like a specific lesson on it, not just waiting for it to. to, to yeah, happen. It's, it's it's all very well directing them to the blue light awareness videos and so on. But like anything, it's nothing like the real thing. Yeah, yeah. We we teach practical skill and yeah. so experimenting and 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 experience in it is 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 crucial. Yeah, um, I'll tell, tell you the one that. Sorry, the one I find is probably the hardest one with clarifying uh, using examples is the judgment on a dual carriageway of overtaking and getting a learner to you know what's our approach speed to the vehicle ahead what's the approach speed of the vehicle behind mm -hmm. and you know that a lot of that because we we'll just do it because we know because we've been driving for god knows how long you know me, me a year or two longer than you but uh, <laughs> Uh, but I find that one of the a harder one to sort of um, use the you know the, the opportunities and examples because that they've just got to experience what it's like and start to work it out for themselves. Yeah, and you're right. Experience is the key. I think there isn't it. So yeah. I anything anything where you are judging the speed and direction of the other vehicles i think is always going to become a difficult yeah but it's going to it's going to be towards the end of their lessons where they're starting yeah. to click so the the examples that i normally are roundabouts because you're judging speed and and, and movement um joining dual carriageways and like you said overtaking on dual carriageways because you are trying or lane changes i suppose as well similar similar yeah. to doing it you're trying to judge what the other cars are doing based on speed and and experience and and the way the way i sort of kind of look at it is when we make that judgment as experienced drivers is so i, I like i'm sure you've you've heard like diane hall diana hall sort of, sort of diane hall sorry um monkey brain thing yeah, so the the the, 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 chimp, up. the the chimp is actually sitting on the sofa behind me at the moment nice. because it's um, too cold in the car. My wife says. So obviously that is to 
down to deal with, dealing with emotions and stuff like that uh, within yeah. the paradox. But uh, but part of within that, it, they talk about how your computer brain is like uh, ten times faster than the human brain. I think is 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 the amount. Um, five. Five, five times yeah. faster than we're going for. Um, okay. <laughs> Chris always comes up with that. <laughs> nice. Okay. So, but still a hell of a lot faster yeah. than yes. your ability yeah. to work it out cognitively. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's what we need to remember is when we're making that decision as driving instructors or experienced drivers is we've already seen that scenario so yes. many times yeah. and we're judging. So it's like catching a ball. Like, if you if you really break down what catching a ball is like it's geometry and like speed and stuff and and it, 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 yeah it's relatively simple not i'm not sure <laughs> there's people here going i can't catch a ball but um <laughs> it's relatively simple thing to do yeah. but realistically there's a hell of a lot going on in your mind there in the background and yes. that's what judging speed of traffic is there's a hell of a lot going on that we just assume and just know and you just yeah. see a scenario and you go yes that's a gap yeah. and and pupils do get that actually they I, I'm, I'm sure you've had this where pupils you see a pupil make a decision before they then act on that decision so you see the twitch of the steering yes. wheel yes or the flick yeah. of the foot um or the, the raise of the eyebrows and you go great they've just seen what i've seen and then nothing happens yeah um, and that's that to me is always a good sign because yes. it's, that, it's that first sign that i can see that the that they now need to trust their computer yeah like it's, it's yes. in there yeah you just need the the human brain to shut up and let the computer do the job um and i think that's that's the way i sort of kind of look at it is you they, they need to input enough data i.e experience for their computers to, i don't think you can make that decision as a, no. it, with your human brain i think you need your computer to take take some yes. of the responsibility yeah. in, that, in that situation yeah, um, i've got a girl this afternoon um she's done there's the girl that I mentioned to you on her third lesson did the race course exit at the top of the Horton Hill. I know. You know, 70 mile an hour road and you're doing about 20 to safely do the do the <laughs> turn. But uh, and from her first two or three lessons, she kept looking at me. <laughs> not not all the time, but she just wanted reassurance. And I'm sitting there thinking, bloody hell, I'm, I, I've very rarely seen anybody who's able to control a car as well as you. Mm. And getting her the lack of confidence in this. Now she's a very very talented runner. She, her um, coach is Gavin Pavey, Joe Pavey's husband. Okay. So he's got a little bit of experience of training, coaching somebody who has become a European mm. champion. Um, I said to her, "What happens in the races? Who makes the decisions? You or Gavin?" well yeah i do I, I suppose he's had an input to sort of help you work, to, to work out what to do yeah he has but in the end you're the one who has to make the final decision mm -hmm. right okay we're doing the same okay you're making oh well, i'll keep the car safe you know i'm not going to not let any, do anything stupid but don't keep looking at me for reassurance because all i'm going to say to you is you're the driver yeah, absolutely. And she's beginning to trust herself a lot more. Um, but I, I think it, it, it comes back also to one of the indicators about the confidence in this, that you're using examples that are in the pupil's range of experience and ability to understand, or or not, if, if it's a lack of confident, competence. And it, this is something that has to develop to get into their range of experience and it's it takes time yeah judge, judgment at speed yeah i tell you what actually talking about judgment of speed where i think this competency would be interesting where it may get marked down is i've heard to, um instructors particularly maybe like uh ex-police officers or something to do with road like road safety sort of kind of backgrounds talk about like meters per second and all of that sort of kind of mm -hmm. like the, the the effectively the science behind stopping in time yeah um and that's quite an interesting one because i think if someone started talking to me about that and actually i'm like relatively good at maths but it's not how i think when i'm driving 
I don't I don't work out meters per second when I'm driving. And so I think if someone started talking to me about that when I was driving, it wouldn't work in, in, as a learning opportunity. Yeah. And and I think that reply, applies to that to that to what you just said there, where you're not using the right tool, the right conversation for me to to create that learning opportunity. Um, it might work for some pupils, absolutely. Um, but it might might put some other pupils off, and they're not quite getting it. So I think we need to be careful like it, and, yes. and everyone's guilty of this is like have like having that your stock answers and your stock conversation you're like oh i know you almost like press play in your brain and yes. the words come out um and i think it's interesting it's important that we do what you've done there where you've turned it into about her running um and making sure you can sort of try and relate it or even just get them to tell you that's the mm -hmm. best way um and, I'll, I'll always ask somebody what are you better at than most of your friends nice and, so, and some of them you know some of them can't think of anything i say e even if it's talking yeah. non-stop you know, i don't care what it is but there's there is there will be something you're better at than most of your friends it might be the most trivial thing in the world or it might be something fantastic you know i've, I've got one girl now who's she, well she passed three years ago she's now an england international at taekwondo she's my claim to fame you know her, her mum's the mum's the one who qualified last week with us um but you know everybody's better than other people at something i had one girl last year was a fantastic artist you know so how did you get as good as that were you born with that skill mm -hmm. no how did you get Oh, practice. Okay. Well, let's practice the right things. You know, my first trading manager at LDC many years ago, Pat Firth, always says practice makes permanent. So whatever you're practicing, that's what will get fixed. If you're practicing the wrong thing, you know, it's going to stick. Yeah, I like that. I've never heard practice made permanent before. Um, I like that. And I, I love that question. Um, what are you better than, than yeah. all your friends? I think... That's that's a much better question than what your hobbies or what your interests, um, because it really and it, yeah, it really gets into the the crux of it. And like you said, you can then use it as, how did you learn that? Um, yeah. Then that's how we're gonna learn this, <laughs> basically. Mm. Um, absolutely. Um, yeah. I think it's a, the other one. I think uh, the, the similar to one I it, the, use as an example is. People just people see other people driving and think it's really easy. Yes, because they've yeah. done it so much. Mm. Um, but I would say, well, if you if you saw someone playing the piano like really well, you wouldn't necessarily go and sit at the piano and go, "Well, I can do that." <laughs> uh, obviously, um, and, and you would assume that that person has put hours and hours of practice in to yes. get to that point, and that's what drivers that they're seeing have done, like not necessarily intentionally, but they've been driving and they put in their however many hours to get to that point where it's it it's sort of subconscious and just breezing through basically yeah. i love it when i've got a pupil who is good at playing a musical instrument mm -hmm. Be, uh, so, so you can read music <laughs> they'll look at me yeah of course i can and i'll say to them right give me that music and i won't have a clue what it's saying i have no idea because I'm musically illiterate. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you have a skill there that I will, well, I'll never master because I don't need to. Maybe if I, 50 years ago, I might have tried. But um, you know, so yeah, there's something that you are so much better at than me. Yeah. You know, so, you know, trying to big them up. And so, there's always something they're, they're good at. And uh, you say, I th I, as you say, I think it is better than asking what's your hobbies and that sort of thing. Um, because it, they do open out a little bit more as well. Yeah. There's something about, there is, I, I really like it. There's something about that question. <laughs> but it, 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 the, the idea of being better than your friends is like the ed, uh, element of competition. Yeah. Um, and and because every well, whatever we say about society, everybody's competitive in yeah, one form or another. Absolutely, there's an element of pride in there that they can take yeah. pride in whatever yeah. their answer is. Um, it, it's ice breaking as a question. I'm guessing you asked that quite early on in like maybe first lesson. Yeah, I'm yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Um, it's rapport building. Yeah, no, I like it. I'm going to steal it and let all my, <laughs> tell all my instructors to Damn, you. I haven't copyrighted it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely popping that in my in WhatsApp group later. Um, I, I think one of the other indicators that I just want to talk about is the recognizing the indicator of competence. Recognize some pupils will respond instantly while others will want to think about the issue. Mm-hmm. And the art of silence and yeah. keeping quiet. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, just having the ability to shut up and give the learner who can't come out with an instant response time to think what it's going to be. Yeah, and I think actually on the, the on the what to avoid this is failing to give the pupil time to think through the issue and come up with their own conclusion. Um, it, it's been quite interesting. Obviously, before doing this podcast, I knew the competencies really well, but um, rereading them and and going through them again, um, what one thing I found really interesting is how many times within the the list of competencies it effectively tells you to shut up. um um, stop talking um and and it's yeah and i and i get i get this as from a pdi point of view particularly and and probably from an an adi actually on a standard check as well where the nerves kick in so you get that verbal diarrhea but also you feel like you need to perform because you've got someone in the back and you think your job is to talk as much as you possibly can and and that'll get me loads of points because i'm i'm given all this information and yeah the amount of times that that it says be quiet in and and allow learning to take place i can't remember whether it was penny hughes or ella burnett who came up or probably they didn't come it may have been ella with 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 bob at ldc the the um or even you possibly with the wooden spoon with w-a-i-t on it so i don't know who came up with the wooden spoon. and, and why am i talking and i you know, yeah. a number of times i hold that up to, to a pdi <laughs> yeah i think i think wait why am i talking was lou i think lou lou right. came that yeah. and she used to have it stuck on her dashboard but yes i don't yeah. I, I i think it was penny was the first person to put it on a wooden spoon yeah. and i still think she hits a pdis around the back of the end of it <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so. well i've got an I, I got one of my girls um a uh, friend uh, who passed with me about three years ago they're, they're ikea babes as i put it and <laughs> they, they spent hours in ikea so i got erin so when well, next time that jasmine takes it to ikea will you buy me two wooden spoons so i've got one with weight on it i've got another one that, uh, it may have been lou again it got waffle on it oh i don't what's waffle stand for or is it just well, no, just waffle okay i thought <laughs> you turned it into an acronym no like, no no i've got that far it's no, just it's just waffle with, ec- with an ex- exclamation mark in the middle of the spoon yeah you know, you, just shut up yeah no i don't yeah no but yeah there's definitely moments <laughs> when you're sat um and you're thinking yeah shh. <laughs> yeah definitely um and, and actually i think if anything it, that i would take from all of these competencies it I, obviously you can't be silent the whole time but the amount of times that silence is you, what, what we've got to kind of remember is learning takes place in the pupil's head and you can't think while someone else is talking yeah. um and so we have to be quiet to let those brain connections happen in their mind and we have to, and on the road we have to be quiet for let to let them work out what's going on on the road um if Fiona was talking earlier about like if you were in a busy city, um, your your like if you were driving in a busy city, you don't know you you, you get everyone else to shut up, you turn the radio yes, off, and yes, and yes. and so so why are we expecting our pupils to to be able to think about all of this while we're talking all the time? Yeah, uh, that's exactly what we do. Well, if I've got a sat nav on when I'm somewhere I've never been before, um, my wife turns the radio off. So that we can actually concentrate on what Satnav's telling us, because you know, <laughs> wherever you go, there are idiosyncrasies on the road, and suddenly you realise you should be in a different lane to the one that you thought you should be in. Um, you know, you, you need to concentrate. Yeah, and, absolutely. Time, time to process it. Yeah, I think Liz Box did a um, a presentation or or a research paper on how much our minds are working in those moments, mm. and and I, I I don't know the, the figures, but it was a lot. Um, yeah. like a real a, a lot and 
it it, it it actually went back it wasn't about that the study it was about when we're driving when it's familiar um and how our minds aren't working like that which kind of shows that we're not concentrating as much and and we're not taking it all in because we're filling in the gaps with our computer brain but they're not always right because mm. stuff happens and um, motorbikes pop up out of nowhere and stuff and so and, and but we're not even like as humans we're not capable of concentrating that much that quick for that long so yeah. that's why driving in a busy city you don't know is so difficult um yeah. because your mind is just ov overloaded um and yeah. so and we t we 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 tune that out when we're when we're driving around our, our local areas um like I, we must do that as driving instructors <laughs> we see it so often that your brain just tunes it out yeah i can remember my the only driving lesson i can really remember and we are going back yeah 50 years now because i lived in west london and my instructor took me along the bayswater road to marble arch he turned right down park lane went round hyde park corner back up to marble arch left and 10 miles or so back home and I can see okay, it was in the days uh, he had a Hillman Hunter with vinyl seats <laughs> and I can remember when we got back my hands I could not get them off the steering wheel <laughs> and then I can still to this day hear the sound and feel of my sweat laden back peeling off of this <laughs> vinyl seat <laughs> not, not that anybody would drive in London now with the congestion charge and so on but it, it it must have been just sensory overload that lesson i don't remember much about it but you know for my hands to, i couldn't get i just could not get them off the wheel because I, I was too, oh, gee, yeah. and and it's anybody who gets in a situation like that it is sensory overload i think and you've got yeah. to manage it somehow yeah like i think you probably need the experience before you before you get to that point yeah. um yeah but i I'd like even as an experienced driving instructor i've been to london and driven around and done like in the city center and it's not fun um <laughs> because i don't know the road so no. I'm, I'm trying to work out where i'm supposed to be what lane i'm supposed to be and i'm watching for motorbikes coming up on uh, both sides and all the other cars dealing with everything and yeah, it's just just a lot going on in my mind. Yes. I, I used to enjoy you know, we are going back forty odd years. I used to enjoy going into central London, but there's no point now. The tr public transport is so much better. Yeah, but the but other my guess is you knew it though. Yes, you? I did. Yes, I did. That's, yeah, I knew where I was the going. The thing I think if yeah. you'd have then if I'd have then sent you to drive through, I don't know, Manchester City Centre. Yeah, which I don't know at all. Yeah, you'd have the same problem, and yeah. and so yeah. um, it, it's the same. Yeah, it's yes. it's about yeah. knowing it that's the yeah. issue. Yeah, yeah. The other thing I was uh, that struck me about the lack of competence is this bit about imposing an interpretation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my God, what's that bloke doing up ahead, driving like that? <laughs> Whereas. You know, something happens and somebody does something, cuts a corner or something. Just tell me your thoughts about how that happened. Or even if somebody does it really well, you know, so what do you think about how that person turned right there? Mm. And immediately they start thinking, oh, they must have done something wrong. Well, sometimes it's clearly obvious they have, but, you know, and then also the what if. You know, somebody turns right too early. Well, what what if there was they got away with it? What if there had been something there? But it's this, you know, but make making the learner think that everything is necessarily completely wrong. Yeah, I think again, it's also about missing the learning opportunity, isn't it? Yes, like, yes. About yeah. that that person who's cut in front of you or whatever, it, rather than the oh, what's he doing? Sort of kind of thing. Actually, what like is there any way we could have noticed that happening earlier yeah like were we watching our mirrors is that like what's the learning opportunity there why might they have done that yes. that's the yes let's yeah. have some empathy for this driver um and and that situation i think this would also those sort of conversations would get you marked down on the discriminatory me sort of kind of yeah oh absolutely yeah as well. but yes but it is definitely this again it's that deciding something is is someone else's fault yeah 
or dismissing it rather than going, okay, there's a thing that's happened. Can we learn from it? Yeah. I uh, always remember dear old Lou saying things like, give me an example. Is there any time where you would break the speed limit? Mm, yeah, I love that question. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. But and, and, and the other part uh, thing about this, uh, none of these can be taken in isolation. So th this particular criteria, the two above it are so interlinked with it as well about the teaching style suited to the learning style, encouraged to analyze problems. The one about the learning style is linked to things in lesson planning. So mm. there's this domino effect with all of these. You can't take any of them in isolation. No, absolutely. And you have hit the bingo for our podcast where there isn't a single trainer that hasn't been on and said that. <laughs> um, so it, it, well, thank God for that. Yeah. I've got my gold star. Yeah, hit that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, because it's true. Like, it, you, it, it's actually probably what makes these conversations difficult because it is hard to isolate these conversations yeah. and not talk yeah. about the other ones um, because they, they are all interlinked. And actually, if I was a PDI listening to that, I take some sort of kind of solace in that because it means I don't have to learn how to do eight, 17 different things. I, I just need to learn how to do a good job in the car and it covers all of these things. And I think that's, that's the key is that it's something that we're, we're doing with our training at the moment is not necessarily going through the competencies um, because what I want to do is I need to know the competencies as a trainer um, I need to know what the DVSA want to want to see, but I think from a part from a PDI's point of view, what they need to know is just know how to do the job yes. that then covers these competencies. So yeah. it's kind of our job as trainers to simplify that a little bit and say, if you do this well, you are going to cover all of these competencies and and get good marks. So it's not about like competency, per, like splitting it out really. Uh, lo lovely lady, uh, what, what a tragedy she's not with us anymore. Just sum the whole thing up in the three bits. Lesson planning, was it appropriate? Risk management, was it safe? Teaching and learning strategies, did it work? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I, I use that regularly. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because it does really sum up the, yeah. the three things. And the, yeah. Uh, and I, I quite often at the end of a session, if I'm talking to people, is, is if unless we're focusing on what's in particular, if it's just an overall assessment, those will be my three questions yeah. to, to yeah. them to to self reflect on. Um, and absolutely, it sort of can, yeah, do do those three things well, and, and you've got a good lesson. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. So, is there anything else you wanted to add on to this? <laughs> No, I, I think I've exhausted all my bullet points. Um, yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Um, yeah, I think like... That, 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 that's, God, God, I need to go to bed soon. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I think to to sum, to sum it up, it is basically find opportunities. Like anything that happens, Oh yeah. make it a learning outcome, isn't it, really? Yes, um, yes. So before we get on to your top tip, um, I'll give you an opportunity to tell everyone where they can find you. Right, okay. Well, um it's more I, th I think the podcast is probably more important than what, uh, what the train you know the driving is the driving is called is training wheels with a z um that was not my invention it was a either my business partner christy or her husband uh, they argue over who who invented the name so i leave that to them um but i also do the xl podcast which is e x e l um which is just about to start up again i have just recently recorded a session with the other chuckle brother uh, of knowledgeably instructor training. So Lee Jowett, the um, red rose half of the combination, uh, now joins Mick Knowles, who was in the, the last series. So uh, I've just done one with him. I'm about to do one with Neil Whiteman. Mm -hmm. um, I've got one with Laura Morris coming up from Go Green. Uh, I have got a couple of uh, our local um, flavour buns. The dear Jody Johnston. Yep. Uh, we're trying to get something sorted out. So you know, it started off as a very much just something for the local Devon uh, Exeter Torbay people, but it's spread out. So uh, you know, all the people that you have on yours, um, a, a good number of those have appeared online. But yeah, that that that's where you can find me anyway. 
I think yeah, absolutely. I think you find that that they've all, they've probably appeared on Terry's and Josh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, the great well. thing is that, that that all these people are so willing to give up their time. Um, Stuart Lockery, who I'd never met, you know, I just got in touch with him and straight away he came out. Yeah, it'd be great to do it. Yeah. And all all these people, they're all willing to give up time. Yeah, absolutely. To, to help everybody and you know it's great that, that, that they do this so, Kev, um shall we move on to what is your top tip for oh, um, uh, instructors now you didn't prepare me for this <laughs> uh, my top tip for instructors i'm not sure i've got a top tip but one thing that come off the, the top of my head i think is please don't ever think that you have stopped learning um, I, I, I don't think that, well, if, if you're an instructor who thinks that you know it all, and I think there are some people who believe they do, um, but, you know, please don't, don't stop and take every opportunity you can to get the free stuff. Even if, if you can't afford to go on a course, God knows how much free stuff there is. No, I'm doing it to a small extent. You're doing it a lot more. Terry Cook is doing it to a uh, gargantuan mind-boggling level yeah. and it's all free you know just get, make sure you keep the fresh the, but for me actually the the never stop learning and it was interesting what you were saying about like going on like these um like there's free stuff there's paid stuff as well but i think the what's really interesting for me is that the people that do that the people that invest in in their time their yes. time and their, and their money as well to to do this you can clearly see are either already really good instructors that are getting better yes or are new and you know they're going to be the good ones yeah. um because that that you can just because that passion to learn and it is really really interesting and actually i remember talking to terry about this um that, that something i found really interesting was when he did his meganar recently um so it's i think it was i can't remember how long it was like three hours of of like six different speakers and 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 yeah. it might have been more than that actually um i be, think it was nine yeah nine yeah, yeah, yeah. it'll be yeah. listening to this, like screaming yeah. at the screaming at the, <laughs> the podcast. um and it's really interesting that i mentioned it to him that it was really interesting the list of people that i could see on there now there was loads of people on there and there was there was loads of like top trainers on there watching it learning still and 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 i think that's 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 where they, that's how yes. people got to that point is because they yes. never stopped learning yeah and and i think that's yeah it's a really good top tip because it sounds really simple but realistically if you look at every person who was at the top of their game in this industry that's their one sort of yes. un, that's the one unifying thing is they never stopped learning and they still don't stop learning that, never think that you've done as much as you can there's always something else there's always somebody who could you can teach you something yeah no yeah 100 percent, absolutely agree um so that's a great way to 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 finish the episode is to tell people who tell people who are listening to a podcast to carry on learning um so I, think I think we're preaching to the converted here um we'll wrap it up yeah there. Um, and so yeah thank you for coming along well and... thank thank you very much for asking me it's uh it's been a pleasure and uh, enjoyable just, again just to be able to bounce ideas off somebody else yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah, I love that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Inspire Instructor Podcast, where the learning never stops.